my God and my Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus, help me today. Help me tomorrow. Help me every day of my life. It's only your help that can make me to finish and finish well. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me. Help me, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The second prayer point is like this, that my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, help me to serve you well. Help me to serve you all the days of my life. Help me to serve you well, oh God. I will not for the children you have given unto me. Help us to serve you well. Help us to serve you all the days of our life. Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. Help me to serve you with God. Help me and all the children you have given unto me to serve you and serve you well. Help us to serve you all the days of our life. My God and my Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus, help me. My Father, my Father, help me. I need your help. Help me. Help me to serve you well. I am not the seed that you have given unto me. Cause us to derive us from heaven. In the name of Jesus. Help us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the final prayer is this. My father, my father. In the name of Jesus. Help us in this ministry. We need your help. Help us in all the centers. Help us in everything we do. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that God will help us in this ministry. We need your help, oh God. We need your God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare the heaven of earth to open unto us. Every day of our life, let the heaven of earth open unto every one of us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because you've answered. We bless you for the program that you have instituted in this place. And, oh God, I pray you breathe on it. And through this program, oh God, I pray eternally ordained people will be added to your ministry and they will be established in this place. And they will go to heaven alongside with the saint in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Have your seat. Praise the Lord. I want to give God praise first for making it possible to gather before him tonight. I want to say, Father, we are grateful unto you. We, your children, we say thank you to you. We say thank you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Amen. And second, secondly, I want to say thank you to my father in the house, Reverend Sylvester Onyemaleshi. Praise the Lord. This ministry in the year 1998, December, shortly before I wed, 1998 till date, I think that's about 26 years, Abi. Okay, let's say 25 because it's toward the end of 1998. He has been training me, teaching me. Praise the Lord. So, man of God, I say thank you to you. The Lord God will strengthen you and give you the grace, the more to train and teach more people in Jesus' name will extend your life and make you to fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank everyone that is here tonight. If you are not here, I can't preach to the chair. Is it possible? And even if I look at the uh, 
at the all and I see maybe one or two person, I will be demoralized. So I thank God on your behalf. And the Lord God that brought you here tonight will cause you to receive something for your life in the name of Jesus. Something irrevocable and something remarkable. But the Bible says the gift of the Lord God is without repentance. And it's irrevocable. The Lord God will not revert that wish he will deposit in your life tonight in the name of Jesus. You will make you to always remember it and give thanks unto him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you once again for this meeting. I pray the blessing you have, you will cause it, the blessing to locate us as we are seated in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We we'll exalt thee. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Help from above. That is the team. Help from above. Help from above. Yeah, it's a story. There is a story in the Bible. About the Bible said there was a great famine in the land. The famine was so severe that people were killing their own children and eating it. And then two women came into an agreement. They agreed together that today they will kill one of their sons so that they will kill and eat. But very, very unfortunate. One released her own son. And the son was murdered and he was killed. And they both ate the flesh together as meat. Praise the Lord. And it came to the turn of the other or the second woman. She refused. <laughs> she said, It's impossible. I can't release my own son. And the first woman was enraged. She was disappointed. And she cried unto the king of Israel. She, 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 she ran to the, to the palace. She cried. She cried. And the king listened to him, uh, to her. Do you know what the king said? The, the king said, If God will not help you, who am I to help you? If your help is not from heaven, where is the man on earth that will help you? Even as a king, that your help is not in his hand. Do you get it? There is one Yoruba proverb that says, For the fact that I and you were born by the same mother from the same womb does not mean that you will help me. But if the Lord God put help me through you, that is the time you will help me. If the Lord God is not helping me through you, there is nothing you can do. That is what the, the, that is the lesser thing the king was telling that woman. That even as a king, there is nothing he can do. The only thing God is not helping you, you cannot derive help from anywhere. Psalm 121, from verse 1. The Bible says, I will lift up my head. Psalm 121. From verse 1, let us read. Psalm 121 from verse 1. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. From hence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. That is the only place where the life of a man comes from. The one that has the power to help and he will not mock you. When man help you in a little way, you will become a subject of mockery. 
when you are going, they will call somebody, look at him. He did not know even now to appreciate little thing that somebody has done for him or her. Look at him going. Yeah, they are, sometimes a goal I help him, he did not even come to show appreciation. But when God help you, he will not attach anything to it. He's not expecting you to come and return something unto him. And even, oh, I remember when my junior sister graduated from university for years she couldn't lay her hand on employment and there was a man that was in a in this state lagos state they were living together in the same street then then my junior sister was now training the daughter of the man how to, uh, how to make uh, art and how to make math how to make some dresses and the daughter now introduced her to our father then she called my sister that I heard that you are a graduate said yes that I will help you give me my your credential my sister submitted a credential to him now to call the long story short this man helped her to secure the job in ministry of education and at the end of the year, I think that was around September, you know, school normally resumes session in September, am I correct? At the end of the year, I think my sister bought a bag of rice and gave to him. And then they were, he was now discussing with his wife that is this what she can come to appreciate them with. Well, no, that bag of rice is nearly half of her salary then. Because by then I think they were paying them 56,000 naira in Lagos State. And he will, he, will, he will go on transportation to the school. The man was not happy. That is man for you, but when God help you, the only thing he's expecting from you is just thanksgiving. Psalm 92 verse 1. You will help me to read so that I will be able to move a little bit faster. Psalm 92 verse 1, if you see it, read it. The Bible says it is a to offer thanksgiving unto your name, most high. That is the only thing God is expecting from you when he help you. He wants you to come back in appreciation to thank him. To give him the fruit of your lip. To say thank you, Jesus. Is, is, that, is, is it a burden on you to say, God, I am grateful for what you have done? It's not a burden. Year after year, this man pay homage. During Salah, he, he bought towel and gift to her. They equally said, Big towel. Is this what she can appreciate them with? She now ran to me. That that the blessing. What can I do? Look at what I've done to for this man still. They are not they are not satisfied praise the lord i will lift up my eyes unto the hill from hence come my help my help come from god the makers of heaven and earth hallelujah i remember there was a woman in my estate then this woman was illiterate but he was a lover of God. She loved God. And one day she was traveling to Lagos in the evening around 7 p.m. She entered into a kidnapper vehicle. He said all of a sudden she just noticed that everybody in the vehicle was sleeping. She now decided to pretend as if she was sleeping because she did not know what is happening. He said but she was not sleeping. But everybody slept off commercial vehicle in the garage along the road in the evening in the whole road everybody slept off she now pretended as if he said all of a sudden the vehicle diverted from the express road and entered into the bush he said that is where she know that he has entered it remember i told you that the woman is, a, is an illiterate but she loved god When they entered into the bush, she did not know when she started speaking. 
she started speaking the word of God in the way she knew how to quote it. She was quoting, she said, she started quoting say, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that there is no temptation that comes upon a man that is above him. He was, she was quoting this, this, this part. Anyhow, God, he was saying it in Yoruba. Oh, uh, she was quoting it in Yoruba. There is no temptation. That this is the period of our temptation. God deliver me today. She connected to the hair from above. She was quoting it anyhow. And all of a sudden, there was argument between the kidnappers. They, you know, they were gang. They started that argument. And the driver shouted that if you people are not careful, I will just turn, turn the vehicle now and take these people back to Ibadan. The argument was so hot. And the driver just stopped turned the vehicle and came back to the road. He said she was, he was driving anyhow. He started crying out to God, today deliver me God, deliver me God. He was saying to Yoruba, Oluwa Bamiloni, Oluwa. He was thinking that probably if there is, uh, if she is not kidnapped, the vehicle can have accident. He said because the driver was driving anyhow. And he came back to the express. He turned to, to Ibadan. He wanted to return them to Ibadan. He said and they met police. Police could not do anything. After like five, ten minutes, he stopped on the road. He just said, everybody come down, come down. He said, that is how they came down from the vehicle. You know, I told you, he's a lover of God. Hell from above. It's only God that can do this. Only God. Man cannot do it. How many times do we hear about the death of soldiers, police, that kidnap, kidnap them and kill them, even mobile police? It's only God. It's only God. Only God can do this. If you look at Psalm 91 verse 13, verse 14. If you see, read it so that I will be able to, to move a little bit faster. It's Psalm 91 from verse 14. It said, because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you. Read it if you see it. Because he loved me. He delighted in me. And he had been loyal to my name. I will protect him. I will answer him when he cry. Anytime he prays unto me, I will answer him. Everyone will give attention. Why? Because he loved me. I think you are reading from my Amplified Version, right? Okay, because he loved me, the woman loved God. He cried unto God in danger. The Lord God responded. The same thing can happen unto you. Help from above. The same thing can happen to anybody that loves God. God is not a respecter of man. If any of the children cry unto God for help, and the and the love of God is in the heart of that child, the Lord God will answer. Age is not the restriction by which a man can get it from God. One way by which you can get it from God is to develop a heart that loves God. Honestly. Then what is this love? What is love? We took time to study love even in this ministry. I believe the same thing is done in this power arena. Am I correct? We, we taught it from days. For months, almost two, three months, am I, am I correct? What is this love? When I was giving you the story about that woman, I said because he had the heart that love God. What is this love? What is love? In my course of teaching, I said it's only the people that love God can, that can get this type of help from God. What is love? Love can simply be defined according to the Bible in a very simple way. If I call somebody now that define love or describe, we, we, we only describe. In the school, I was taught when you are asked to define something, that thing you are, you are giving definition to must not reflect in your definition. Am I correct? 
Eh? For instance, you are describing a book or defining a book. You now say a book is a book that we we write. Or a book is a book that we read. It's correct, but book, what is the meaning of book? What is the definition for book? That is what I'm trying to tell you. What is law? That can make God to give attention to you when you develop the art of love for him. Then you, will, you are qualified for earth from above. What is this law? In a very simple way. I gave them test. Sometimes in the fellowship, define law. I call one, I call two, I call three. What is law? Somebody told me law is, 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 is a sacrifice. Yes, it's giving me the facial of law. It's giving me the characteristics of law. What is man? Man has two eyes. What is man? Man can think. That, these are the features of, of man. I say, yes, you are correct, but define law. What is law? In a very simple way. Second John chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, for this is love, walking in the commandment of God. If you see it, read it. Second John chapter 1, verse 6. We have only one chapter in that book. Oh my God. Living in obedience to what God commands. This is love in King James Version. The Bible says, for this is love, walking in obedience to the commandment of God. Maybe you say, I don't really know the meaning of this love. Love is walking in obedience to the commandment of God. Walking in obedience to the commandment of God. That is simply the meaning and the definition of law. When you are obedient to the word of God, it means, or to the commandment or instruction of God, it means you love him. When you live your life to please him, it means you love him. And you can only live your life to please him by submitting your will to his will. When his will becomes your will, it means you love him. When he tells you you want to go out, don't pass through this place, pass through the, my left hand side, and you are obedient to that, it means you love God. But once you are disobeying him, it means you don't love him. Love is, is walking in the commandment of God. If you will move straight to say, to first John chapter 5, verse 3. First John chapter 5, verse 3. Read it. In fact, this is the love for God to keep his commandment. Oh my God, the commandment of God is not burdensome, it's not grievous. It's okay, my brother. This is the law for God to keep his commandment. And his commandment is not grievous. His commandment is not a burden. His commandment is not a load. When you connect to this law for God, you will definitely get F from above. Honestly. You will get F from above. No wonder. Jesus Christ, people wonder, why is it that God is dealing with this man in this way? Is it because it's Jesus that made God to relate with him in the way God was relating with him when he was a man like you and I? Eh? It's not because he was Jesus. It's not because he was God. By then, the Bible says, he left his glory and he, he came in the form of man. What is capable of doing, or what you are capable of doing, that is exactly what he came to do. So that he can prove to you that this thing I'm doing, you can equally do it. Then why? Why? 
Jesus Christ said, the one that sent me is with me. I am, I am reading from John chapter 8. The one that sent me is with me. He said, simply because the readiness to always obey him is upon me. John chapter 8. The one that sent me is with me. Verse John chapter 8, verse 29. The one that sent me is with me. He has not left me alone to do anything on my own. For I always do what pleases him. Some version we put it like this. The one, the one that sent me is with me. My father is with me. He did not leave me alone. For the readiness to always obey him is upon me. When he looked at his heart, he's ready, he was ready always to obey God. And you remember the definition of love, walking in the commandment of God. My, Bible, my brother read it, that love is obedience to the commandment of God. So, God loved Jesus and he was with him because the readiness to always obey God is upon him. If you two are ready always to obey God, God will be with you. No one that definitely says in Psalm 23, he said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no foe. For thou art with me. What is the reason that make God to be with David? And if you practice love, God will be with you. And once God is with you, you will get help from above. Help will not be far away from you. Once he is, is with you, Once you are ready to obey him all the time, the readiness is upon your heart and you put it into action, the Lord God will be with you. You remember, he's a faithful God. You know that? That heaven and earth will pass away, but the thought of his word will never pass away without being fulfilled. You remember the Bible tells us he that God will do it is faithful. And he's faithful. Once you love him. In Psalm 91 verse 14. Now 13 that we read. He said because he has set his love upon me. I will deliver him. Once you love him. You call upon him. You will be rescued from your problem. And trouble. Hey from above. Hey from above. Let me tell you something. Some year back, I think 2011, I lost everything I have to flood. Everything. To flood. And to pay my, my office rent became absolutely impossible. That is the first place where I know that the word of God is genuine. It's real. It's ever standing. He said, I wash over my word to, 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 to perform it. I wash over my word to perform it. When it happened to me in life, I know that truly this word of God is real. Sometimes to raise 1,000 alive in a day was difficult. Somebody that always raises 100, 500, 400,000 naira in a single day, apart from Sunday, to raise 1,000 naira was absolutely difficult. It became difficult. Then, I never think of how we will feed six members in the family, four children, me and my wife, making six. To get 1,000 naira difficult. To get 500 naira difficult. But still, 
he provides our food. He never allows us to beg. The Bible says, I am young, but now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for seed. When a bag of rice is finishing in our house, somebody will call pastor. Oh, I think by then I was a deacon. Deacon, do you bring your car? I have a bag of rice in my boot for you. I never ask. Somebody will come. Deacon, you are a lover of yam. I have five, two bars of yam for you. Somebody will come. This is five, five liters of oil. Take. I never ask them. I am young, but now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. That is hell from above. If not so, we could have been going from one place to another begging. Yesterday, we've not ate. Can you give us something to eat? But the Lord God arise in his help. He can do the same thing for you. In that same year, my daughter gained admission to university. We can't pay the school fees. My wife asked me in the night. He said, does it mean that this lady will not go to school because of finance? I said, which lady? He said, our daughter. I said, don't worry, she will go. He said, you say, we go. I said, yes. He said, the admission is expiring tomorrow. If we don't pay acceptance fees and pay the school fees, tomorrow is the deadline. Everything is gone. I said, don't worry, she will go. And early in the morning, she woke me up. What do we do now? I said, go and dress up and tell, wake her up to go and dress up. Let them get ready to go to school. He thought I have the money. She dressed up. She woke my daughter. Both of them got they were they got ready. Why she dropped our daughter Linife? Oh, are you? No arrangement for food. No arrangement for school fees. No arrangement for accommodation. He said, "What do we do? You are giving me five thousand. I said, "Go. I will send the money to you." When she got to the garage, she called me, Daddy, we are in garage. I said, don't worry, you, the money is coming. Move on. Pay. When they got to Mowe, he called me, Daddy, we are in Mowe. I said, don't worry, go. When they got to Ibadan, she called me, I shouted on her. I said, woman, I said, you should go. Stop disturbing me. If I had the money, when you are leaving, I could have given it to you. Stop disturbing me. Go. I said, okay. By the time they pass Ibadan, she still called. When they reach if I, she called, Daddy, we are in Ife. Go to school, the campus. You will get, I will send the money. When they reach if when they enter bus to Ife, he said, Daddy, we are inside bus. I say, I say, you should go. Don't disturb yourself. I will transfer money to your account. They got there. They said, I'm robber. Was disturbing bank. So nobody, there was no bank functioning in Ife. They said now because of that they have allowed them to pay online and they now ask her are you ready to pay online i said i'm ready sir he said okay somebody took her to a secretary to a professor the secretary said i don't have a uh, system that you can use but my boss have system let me introduce you to my boss and she was introduced to the professor, the name of the professor then in dentistry, Professor Adebayo. I don't know him. Even if my wife meet him today, he cannot recognize him. She released her laptop to my wife, used to make this transaction. And the professor went into his own office while my wife was sitting in the secretary's office. After five minutes, the professor came out. Madam, are you true with the laptop? He said, no, what are you waiting for? He said, I'm waiting for my husband to transfer money. He said, don't worry, I have money in my account. Use it. I'm not talking about 10,000 naira. I'm talking about almost 300,000 naira. Help from above. He said that the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 11, he said that the scripture has rightly put it there is no one that trusts him that will ever be ashamed you can never see shame if you trust god love him with your heart never you can't see shame that is the word of god and the word is standing 
He said, I have money in my account. You use it. And she collected, he collected the computer from her. She did it and transferred the money. This man never asked me for one day until one year. And that to be done, the to my man wanted to ask about the money. I could have paid. I don't have. I'm telling you the truth. Do you know what happened? They called my daughter. They said, is your father having an account with any of the bank in Nigeria? We want to refund part of your money. Tell your father to call us. We want to speak with him. He gave them phone. He said, we are causing conveniency for your daughter. And as a result, we want to return part of the money after a year. Or run it to a year because that was the completion of a session. He said, but we want the exact account that bears your name so that we know, we are sure that the money is coming to your account. And I remember all my account was on, 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 on business, it was on a business account. I now remember my Echo Bank account that bears my name. I went there, is this account dormant? They said, no, it's still active. I gave it to them. They transferred part of the money. I now had it to it. I now called the sec, the professor, sir, your money is ready. And he sent this account and I transferred the money to him. Help from above. He can help you. He can do what? Just love him. Trust him with the whole of your heart. You will get help. Oh, my, my wife wanted to deliver twins. The twins were, were crossing. They call it bridge. Am I correct? The head is here. The legs are here. Crossing. When they want to come out, they want to come out with side. Which is more difficult than coming out with leg or bottom. You know, fighters can come in in different way. Come out in different way. But the, the, the easiest way and the proof way by God is to come with head. <laughs> but this time around, they, they were not coming with bottom. They were not coming with leg. They were coming with side. Which is very, very difficult. It's only oppression that can bring out such babies. Only oppression. The doctor told my wife, he called me, that we need to do selective oppression for her so that we don't distress these twins and you and your life will not be at risk. And my wife told me, so by so doing, this woman must not fall into labor. Once the time is due, bring her so that we operate on her. When we left the doctor's office, my wife told me, I don't want operation. I said, why? By then we have money. I said, is it because of the money? He said, no. He said, the pain is too much because our second born was delivered through surgery. He said, he did not want to pass through that pain again. We lay our hand, we pray, you, this baby, turn. Turn. The twins refused to turn. The day of oppression, they rushed out to hospital. The doctor shouted, and I told this family that they should not allow this woman to fall into labor. They called me, where are you? I said, I'm on my way to Ilori. He said, turn back. Your wife is with us. Come and sign. While I was waiting, or when I turned back, I was driving to Ilori, I turned back. I connected to the hair from above. And my wife equally connected to the hair from above. We called our senior pastor. Our senior pastor, pastor told her that I am not in Lagos. I am in Benin. That he was not in Lagos, that he was in Benin. And my wife told her, distance is not a barrier to prayer. Psalm 107 verse 20. The Bible said, I sent my word and my word. He led them and delivered them from their dead. Today you are delivered from that that is troubling your life. Today you are connected to her from above. Your deliverance has come. What you just need to do is to develop the heart that loves God and walk and allow his will to become your will. And the man of God prayed for my wife. Before I arrive, can they turn? Taye. Because Taye is the first one. He turned and brought a uh, brought head and it came out. Help 
from above. Hosea chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says, I will have mercy upon your dwelling place. I will deliver you by mercy. I will not deliver you by sword, nor by spear, nor by battle. Today you will be delivered by mercy. And from above, an answer prayer. The Lord God answered the prayer. That yet came out. And they were waiting for the second one to come out. The doctor was panicking. That this is what I don't like. Go and prepare the emergency uh, theater for them. Then the midwifery, you know, sometimes they are well experienced and doctors. So he said, it's not too late. If the second one has not come out, my, my wife had. Had her. It's not too late. If the second one has not come out. Hallelujah. They were rushing to prepare theater in order to conduct surgery on her. The midwifery that they, told, they instructed to stay with my wife told my wife, child, as if you are in labor. And my wife screamed. The second one turned and came out. Eh, from above. Eh, from above. Who tell you that you are not qualified for this help? You remember I told you that God is not a respecter of man. Age is not the determinant for help. Once you repent of your sin and you are attached to God, God will help you. He will help you. How many should I tell you? About the help that my family has gotten from God. In a miraculous way. The two is now that I'm talking about they, were, they are in university. One is in Futa, the other one is in Benin. When I wanted to travel, I told them, you twins, big Futa. But one of them refused that he wanted to go to Uniben. By the time we were away, she collected, he collected the form and filled Uniben. Why the second one filled Futa? By the time they, re, they, they resumed to school, we pay for the accommodation here. We came. We pay for the accommodation there. I said, a jam by. They are qualified for accommodation in school, but all of a sudden they said, Ken, they cannot get accommodation. The one in Benin, and he has already paid. And I call. He called me. Daddy, this is what they told me. I said, Do you pay to the school or somebody help you? Say somebody. I say, Oh, I pray that this your money will not go. <laughs> I said, I pray that this your money will not go. I said, now the first thing, tomorrow morning, go to the person that your daddy said he should transfer the money to his own account. We were discussing in my neighborhood. Pastor, what are you discussing? I said, the balcony, the accommodation. I said, my mother have a house in Benin. I said, let him go and check it in medical road. Can they check the accommodation? I said, daddy, I love it. There, there are beddings there. The kitchen is rooming. There is gas there. There is table ready for him. I told him, I said, can they love the accommodation? I said, what do we do now? I said, I tell him to go and occupy it. Help from above. The line will fall upon you in peace and places. It's the word of God. The lines are falling upon me in peace and places. Something I did not labor for. And the second day he got his money back. He told the person that my daddy said you I should give you this account that you should transfer the money. The person transferred the money. Is there anything in your life that you have lost? Is there anything in your family that you have lost? And you are thinking that you cannot get this back. I connect to heaven on your behalf. And I declare, declare and decree restoration. Be restored. May your fortune be restored. May your final be restored. May your heart that the enemy has tampered with be restored in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
there is nothing you cannot do. Protocol breaker. Amen. <laughs> I don't know why I sing. But thank God. I have people that can support me to sing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are due for that air. Who tell you that the word of God cannot be fulfilled in your life? And Elijah told the king, the king sent to Elijah that if the head of Elijah will remain on his neck to the, tomorrow, you know what the story? And when they told Elijah about what is happening, Elijah said, by this time tomorrow, bread that, that we are buying for 1,008 will turn to 1,000 naira. By this time tomorrow, a bag of rye that is being sold for 85,000 naira will come to 50 something thousand naira. Time of refreshment will come upon Nigeria again. And your eyes will see it. My eyes will see it. And we will be a partaker of the good. Isaiah 119 If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the goodness of the land. You remember love is obedience to the word of God. Obey him. You will get it from above. Where do you get it from? That the scripture cannot be fulfilled in your life. It's a lie. It's a trick from bottom of hell. You can be ill. Your finance can be set to the gate. Your accommodation, your rent can be set to by heaven. It's a deceit of the devil. If it is truly that they want to set this place, Jesus Family Fellowship, we get it. We are not the type that we use prayer to take it by force from the landlord. You understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes landlord will say, Don't give your land to church. So people will be advising them. They will pray, pray, pray until they, until they collect the land from you. But the Lord God will provide money for us. We will get this place. Help from above. When it's ready to help you, there is nothing it cannot do. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. It said, Now my the Lord God will give you peace always by all means. By all means. When he wants to help you, there is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. Let me tell you the story. There was a pastor in uh, Palm Grove during COVID-19. You know money was not coming in like before. He rented the place. And the, the, the rent deal at that time to pay was difficult. He prayed. He prayed. Nothing was happening. And he now resorted and let him pack out instead of being faced with the grave, let him pack to Ikorodu. Let him relocate to Ikorodu. We early will be able to afford the rent. Do you understand it? Then he decided to offer praise and thanks unto God for that lovely idea to relocate to a I need from you, send me your account number. I am telling you life story. When the Lord God is ready to help you, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. I think Isaiah 43, 10. If you see, read it. Say, Fear not, for I will help you. 
Am I correct? 42 verse 10. Let me see it here. Isaiah chapter 40. Eh? 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Read it. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Don't be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. With my righteous hand, I will uphold you. Man can fail, but God will never, never fail. I will strengthen you and help you. He sent this account to the man. All of a sudden, he heard the noise. Alarm. Eh, alert. In his answer, gah, 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 gah. He, check, he check it. He saw 16 million. He cannot pronounce it. 1,600. Ah, this is not one six, so. Do you understand it now? 16,000. Ah, uh-uh. this is not 16,000. No, he opened it. He opened it. 16 million. He called the man. I saw what you said. The man said, I'm not done with you. God said, I should help you. Somebody cannot recognize, but the man said, I know you. Today, the Lord God will help you. I am telling you life story. If I stand on this hotel and I'm telling you, of what benefit will it be to me? No benefit. You can't crucify me if I don't tell you. Abi, neither will you crucify me as I'm telling you. But there is no reason why I should stand before God and be telling lie. 16 million. But this one I cannot remember. The third day or the following week, it transferred another money. I think it was 20 million. Everything resulted into 36 million naira. The man bought the house. He didn't pay rent again. He bought the house. Your story will change. Your name will transform. The Lord God that changed the name of Abraham to Abraham will change your name. There will be transformation of life as we are connected to earth to deal in the name of Jesus. Help from above. I will land up with this testimony. Then we pray again. And we do what we want to do and we close. Tomorrow we continue from wherever we stop. Praise the Lord. Help from above. Help from above. You know, I told you we lost everything during that year. And we couldn't pay our office rent again. It was extremely difficult to pay. You know the water, I wasn't affected by the water alone. My neighbors were equally affected. The person by my right hand side was affected. The person at my left hand side was affected. The first thing, the person in front of me was affected. They took all of them to court. And they ran to me. That the blessing. What should we do? This lawyer have taken us to court. I said, go and beg him to withdraw the case. The money you want to use to do case, use it to pay and promise him. He said, will he agree? I said, if you pray, he will agree. The person in my front was taken to court. He was sent out of the building. And they still forced him to pay. Because court will force you to pay. The person by my left hand side agreed with what I told her. She pleaded. They withdrew the case. The person at my right hand side ran to me again. I told her the same thing. Go and plead that this case should be withdrawn from court. They did. Go and look for money and pay and promise them. My office is like from this place. It's not up to this place. Everything, the size is, wasn't, is not up to this place. But it's nearly the size of this place. From this to that place. I am paying times two or whatsoever they are paying. 
That is if their money is 100,000 naira, my own is 200,000 naira. And I asked them before they took that, how many years are you in? He said, only one year and some more. And I, I, I have lost count. I don't know the number of years I'm owing. Maybe two or three years or four years, I can't know. Honestly, I'm telling you the truth. Because water destroys everything. I now received the call from the caretaker. I thought they want to give me a letter. I said, sir, I'm coming, to, I'm coming to see you. I'm coming to see you, sir. I dropped the phone. I never allowed him to talk. The second day, he repeated the same call. said, Mr. Dekiton, you said you are coming to see me. I said, yes, daddy, yes, daddy, I'm coming now. I did not allow him to talk. I stopped the phone. When I dropped the phone, the Lord God spoke from heaven. He said, pick your phone, go and see him. If you are privileged to hear from God, it's a good thing. And you can only hear from him when you have a heart that loves him. Honestly. I think 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. He said, I will show you these secret things that eyes have never seen nor perceived in the heart of a man. Read it if you see it. Second Corinthians chapter, First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. As it is written, eyes have not seen, neither has he entered into the heart of any man. The thing that the Lord God have in stock for you. Oh my God, for the people that love Him. You know we are talking about love, and we are matching it with something. If you love him, what will be happening in your life will be miraculous. Eyes have not seen, neither have it been heard by any ear, nor perceived by the heart of man, what the Lord God has in store for those that love him. Love him. You will see, you will see miracle happening in your life. Love him. Love him. You will derive earth from above. God has told me, pick your hand phone and see. When I got there, I said, Mr. David, I said, yes, daddy. He said, we have look. This, your outstanding is much. We now decided to cancel it. Can you get 100,000 around pay so that we give you receipt? I said, yes, daddy, I can get. I sold for 100,000 naira. The Lord God helped me. Somebody that paid for 2,000 naira and people refused. I called people for 100,000 naira. The money was given to me. I paid the rent. The second said, You've got in it. I said, Yes, daddy. He wrote receipt. He said, You are no longer in us. Your rent will due December. And from January, you will pay another rent. He canceled it. Your debt is canceled. Your debt is canceled. Your debt is terminated. You will not die suddenly. You will not die prematurely. You will not die before your time. You will live a fulfilled life in the name of Jesus. The Lord God canceled the debt. <laughs> he canceled it. Protocol breaker, break protocol. Jehovah Lover, do, do something great for me. Stand on your feet. I come for help, help me. That blind man of Bartholomew approached Jesus and Jesus asked him, what do I do for you? What do you want God to do for you? The helper of life is in our means. Open your mouth and pray. Father, help me. I need help. Oh, my God, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. Cry unto him. The apple of life. Your destiny. Your creator. Cry unto him for help. Now, Father, help me. 
Lord Jesus, help me. I need help. In my finance, I need help. In the ministry you have committed into my hand, I need help. My father, help me. Open your mouth and cry unto him for help. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help me. Help me. In the ministry, help me. Help me, help me. Help me, Father. Lord Jesus, help me. Open your mouth and cry for help. Us. Open your mouth and cry unto him. Help me. In the name of Jesus, help me. I need help from you. Let my help come. Let my testimony manifest. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Father, I need help. Help me, God. Jehovah God, help me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you need somebody that needs help, bring the person tomorrow morning. Maybe the person needs help in his, in his head or her head. Tell the person to come. There was a fellowship I attended recently. A woman was blind. Whenever she's coming to my office, she come with her son or her daughter. They will drag her hand because I deal with pharmaceuticals then I now invited the woman mommy can you come for this fellowship he said I will come she came and by the time we, the fellowship was over she was going I said mommy come back she returned yes sir join me let us pray for this woman and deliver her from this blindness today we prayed for her she left They are booked for operation, surgical operation, surgeon or surgery, ophthalmologist book her. But they couldn't do it for roughly five, six years because her sugar was high. Her sugar level was high. They can't perform operation if your sugar level is very, very high. And her BP was high. She said she now decided to visit the hospital the second day. They tested out and they said, your, your sugar is normal. What do you take? They said, I'm not taking anything. They tested that BP. They said, your BP is okay. Madam, you are not going home. All your people that you are in the hospital, we want to do this. They, we want to carry out the operation on you today. They carry out the operation on her. And the operation was successful. And a week, the fellowship is every Thursday. A week after, I didn't see her. Two weeks, I didn't see her. Then, 14 days and the second day, okay, the 15th day, I now decided to pick my call, my phone to call her. That mommy, hope it is well. We've not seen you for some time. I saw her coming. I saw her coming to my office. I look, I did not see anybody dragging her. I said, mommy, what happened? She said, I have seen, I have seen, I have seen. My sight is restored. I said, mommy, your sight is restored. I said, no wonder you come alone. He said, pastor, like, I, am I, come, I came alone. Oh my God. The Lord God opened her eyes. She, find, she found help. She found help. Do you know what the woman did? She started sending somebody to the fellowship. 
she sent another man. He said, do you know mommy uh, Deborah? She's the one that asked me to come. Now that is where God performed miracle on her eyes. Of course, <laughs> the man came with sold drugs to the woman. Because we tested her, we put it at her sugar was high, we gave her drug, we collected our money. He said, I came for the fellowship. I said, oh, we just finished the fellowship. He said, when, what is the time? I said, the fellowship is nine to ten, one hour. And the man made it. He was very consistent. But nearly one month, two months. And all of a sudden, he disappeared. That that daddy, uh, his eyes has opened. That the same God that did this for her has done it for the man. He said, I will direct another person. I said, Mommy, I want you to be coming to the fellow. He said, I will come. He said, I will come. He said, the reason why he could not make it now is because he has resumed back to his business. And the place is far. He said, the, the side stopped ah, for some time. He couldn't make a business again. Now that she can see, she has returned back. Your glory will be returned. Tomorrow, you know somebody that needs help around you, tell the person to come that Jesus is here to help the person. And he will help him or her and help you. That blind, a proverb said, a blind man said, told somebody, he said, help me by helping yourself. Only Romy Lower, no Allah, Lower, be Ochen Romy Lower. Help me by helping yourself. Help somebody and help yourself. Lift up your hand again. That my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, in this month of April, visit me with your help. In this month of May, visit me with your help. Visit me, oh God. Let it be obvious in my life that the Lord In the name of Jesus, let it be obvious in my life that God has helped me. Father, for you will help us. We receive help from above. We receive help. We receive help from above. We receive help now. Thank you, Father. 